to face to face and today we're going to go in the middle of New York City in Hell's Kitchen we're going to talk about uh, Airbnb hotel housing issue air pollution and so on and so forth and with Tom welcome to face to face Tom David thank you for having me I appreciate you, it. you're welcome so you are a big activist uh, organizer in Hell's Kitchen <laughs> to to protect your environment and and and, and tell me tell tell us more well, I'll, let me give you a little background sure. on it. Um, I did actually move into Hell's Kitchen in 1977. Okay. Uh, back at a point in time that it really wasn't was a neighborhood was a that, tough time. <laughs> that people wanted to live in. But uh, I, I moved into a loft space. Uh -huh. uh, my wife is a dancer. I'm a writer. Oh, great. Uh, and we found a loft space to move into, uh -huh. which uh, back then was illegal, mm -hmm. uh, but since then has been legalized. And, yeah. um, and we we loved the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, this was a fantastic, oh, it's a fantastic, it was a fantastic yeah, place it's a fantastic to live. I mean, we had the drugs, we yeah. had the crack, we had yeah. the prostitution. Yeah. Yeah. We had the car stripping rings. We had a shotgun murder yeah, yeah. Uh, in front of our place you in 1979. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we had all of that. <laughs> but people who lived in Hell's Kitchen then, mm -hmm. they lived here because they wanted yeah. to. Yeah. It was a real neighborhood. You knew everybody on the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I moved into my place, mm -hmm. I had to get permission from the guy who ran the ice company down the block from me. I rented the place for my landlord, but then the landlord said, you have to go down and talk to Paulie, because Paulie has to give you permission to live on his block. So I went down, I met Paulie. I said, this is who I am, you know, this is my wife, you know, we went in, and he looked at me and he, said, he was uh, five foot six, 230 pounds, bullet head little guy, uh, just right out of central casting. And he looked at me and was like, Tommy, you seem like a nice boy. You can live on my block. So Everybody I'm, on the block has to go through this guy. Pauly. It was Pauly's block. <laughs> and Pauly took care of the block. When my kid was born in 1994, I took my, I, when he was five days old, I took him down to Pauly and said, Pauly, it's my boy. And Paulie looked at me, he had tears in his eyes. Wow. He looked at me and he said, Tommy, your boy will always be safe on my block. Unbelievable. And it was true. You were always safe on Paulie's block. You lived on Paulie's block, you were always safe on wow. Paulie's block. You never had to worry That's about it. That's a New York story. It was a real New York, it was wow. a real New York place. That's, That's how things got done back then. That's unbelievable. Well, so then what, uh, 15 years ago, the real estate industry realized that Hell's Kitchen was Midtown. You know. Was in New York City? Was there's, in there's, Manhattan? There's Times Square. You know? <laughs> uh, there's Times Square. There's all the subways are at Times Square and at the Port of Florida. And the theater district. The theater district. The, the tunnel uh, is, is coming in. Yeah. It's Midtown. Yeah. So the real estate industry decided to stop calling it Hell's Kitchen, be Clinton. Oh. Uh, so often people think it's because of Bill and Hillary Clinton, yeah. but it's not. It's no, because it's of DeWitt Clinton, mm -hmm. who was the first governor of New mm -hmm. York mm -hmm. and who was also a cross-dresser, yeah. uh, the first cross-dressing governor mm -hmm. of New York mm -hmm. in the 18th century. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we love DeWitt, yeah. uh, but we're not calling our neighborhood Clinton. Clinton. It's, it's Hell's it's Kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. So the other thing that then happened back there uh, at the turn of the millennium mm -hmm. was that our then mayor, Mr. Bloomberg, mm -hmm. he and his deputy mayor, Dan Doctoroff, mm -hmm. they decided that they would build a stadium mm -hmm. on the west side of New yeah, York. Yeah, I remember drawing. <laughs> I remember a blueprint of that yeah. story. It's going to be the Chet Stadium. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They'd play eight games a year mm -hmm. you know, in that stadium, and then mm -hmm. the rest of the time it would be what? You know, a giant white elephant. And how would you get the people over there? How would you move people to that, to the west side of Manhattan? Anyway. We didn't want it. Mm -hmm. So all of these groups, coalitions, block associations, mm -hmm, neighborhood mm -hmm. groups, community groups, got together to fight the stadium. And in 2003, 2004, when it finally went into the crapper, um, we all looked at each other and said, all right, you know, we fought the stadium, so there's a lot of other issues in our neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, I, I just mentioned to you a minute ago, we have yeah. the third worst air quality of any neighborhood in New York yeah. City. No, I'm, I'm like... Because we've got the tunnel yeah. comes in, the Lincoln no, no, Tunnel is there, yeah. uh, Port Authority is, is right there. Yeah. So we have traffic issues, we have air quality issues, we have housing issues. So we decided to put together a group called the West Side Neighborhood Alliance. Mm -hmm. And I'd been working against the stadium, so I started working on this group too. So in 2004, we started getting calls from people in the neighborhood saying, I, I, I don't know what to do, but every weekend my building's filled with Italian tourists. Yeah. And we were like, well, what? You know, what, is, what is this? Yeah. 
but calls just kept yeah, yeah. coming in, and yeah. we'd go and we'd visit the people, and yeah. we'd we'd see it. We'd yeah. see, you know, a Friday afternoon, yeah. you know, a, a, a minivan would pull yeah. up, and yeah. people would jump out. They have all yeah. their suitcases, yeah. and they'd be like, "Hi, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm going to apartment 5E." Yeah. So, the whole illegal hotel industry in New York City really ground zero yeah. was Hell's Kitchen. Oh yeah. Well, it's Times Square. Yeah. Tourists come here to yeah. have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the theater That's district. Uh, you know, all the clubs we have, we have so all the clubs on yeah. the other side of 11th Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the theater district. Restaurant yeah. Row yeah. is on 46th yeah. Street. So we mm -hmm. were, we mm -hmm. were ground zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, what, 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 what is going on here? Mm -hmm. And it took us a while to figure out that what was going on was that both landlords and tenants, uh, quite frankly, were renting out their apartments through online yeah, um, websites. Um, Airbnb and so on. Uh, well, yeah. Airbnb uh, didn't happen until 2008. Yeah. Um, so, so it started before that? Oh, yes. No, Airbnb, they're pikers. They're new kids. Yeah. They're smart. Uh, they're very good at what they do. Yeah. Uh, perhaps better than the rest of the people mm -hmm. that been. But Airbnb wasn't an initial concern of mm -hmm. ours. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point in time, New York City's law was a little unclear about this. Uh, in fact, the multiple dwelling law that was originally written in 1929, it said that a Class A building shall be used as a rule for permanent dwelling. So the term as a rule was interpreted by a court in 2011 to mean, well, in general. In general. Exactly. So if 51% of the, of the apartments time, yeah. are, are permanent, and then the other 49, you know, could be, be transient. Whenever. So uh, Dick Gottfried, who is a assemblyman in our district, uh -huh. and Liz Kruger, who's the mm -hmm. state senator just mm -hmm. east mm -hmm. of us here, mm -hmm. uh, in 2010, they got the law changed in Albany so that it now says Class A apartments will be used for permanent residential. Mm -hmm. So that means they have to be rented for 30 days or more. So that means you can't rent them for a three-day weekend. You mm -hmm. can't rent them for mm -hmm. a, uh, a week. Yeah. So once we got that law changed... Mm -hmm. um, things came down. Well, we frankly, you know, pat ourselves on the back and all went home. Well, you you know, we said, hey, we worked we on this for four years. Exactly. The law changed. <laughs> We're Unbelievable. The guys, you know? Yeah. And then the calls just kept coming in. You know, I, I, the, the, there's only two of us left. You know, Hell's Kitchen is a lot of row houses. You know, Hell's Kitchen originally was built residentially yeah. for the stevedores yeah. to work on the ships, yeah. on the piers. Yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's small. It's five-story buildings, exactly. ten Bricks. units. Yeah. You know, back then they were all you know, cold water flats, yeah. and the buildings all had little coal mm -hmm. stoves and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. little, little chimneys. That's, yeah. where, that's where the stevedores mm -hmm. lived mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. um, West Side Story. Yeah. You know, West Side yeah, Story movie, takes place. Movie, exactly. It takes place here. A, it was actually filmed in the uh, tenements that mm -hmm. were then torn down to make Lincoln Center in, in uh, 1963. Oh, I see. So I mean, it's all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they used those, all those tenements had been yeah. condemned then mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. build Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so these people just found that suddenly they were the only one, two, three tenants left in their building. So we realized, man, oh my God, you know, this is way worse than we had ever. So, so uh, the people left, and the, the, the apartment where 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 some people bought the apartment and were using them for uh, illegal tourists. hotels. Yeah. Well, two things would happen: either um, if it was a rent stabilized apartment. Mm -hmm. It used to be that if a landlord wanted to illegally deregulate a rent stabilized apartment, then they would have to warehouse it. They would just not rent it to anybody. And after four years, then it no longer shows up on the registration with the HCR. It disappears. Ah. Off. So it becomes an illegally terminated rent stabilized apartment. Wow. But that meant that the landlord had to eat the rent for yeah. four years. Yeah. Which, which then, then he got a free market apartment. Yeah. So you know, ultimately it was worth yeah. it. But with these online companies now, it means that they could take an empty apartment, someone moves out of it, it's rent stabilized, it should remain rent stabilized, mm -hmm. uh, but they would then not rent it to a new tenant, mm -hmm. they would put it online, mm -hmm. they'd rent it to tourists, 
They get paid in cash. Mm -hmm. They would make money off of the apartment. Mm -hmm. It would get deregulated at DHCR after four years. But after four years, when it became then free market, technically, oh. they didn't then rent it to another long-term tenant because they were making, making $200 so a night exactly. in cash. So even if they could make $3,000 a month on a long-term tenant, they could make $6,000 a month in cash. And because the apartment was technically empty, it was a business write-off. It was a business loss. I didn't rent that apartment. I lost the income off of that apartment. They write off their taxes. So they don't pay taxes on the money that they're getting in cash for the illegal hotel, and then they write it off because it's a business loss on the other side because it wasn't rented. No, the illegal hotel business, people don't, don't get this. People think the, the illegal hotels are like home sharing. This is what Airbnb says. It's home sharing. You no, no, meet no. people. I know, I, know, I know people who bought the full building, not just apartment. They yes. bought the whole building. Full building. To, to do the story. So it's yeah. not, it's not, I know it's not no, no, just. It's, uh, all, it's all a lie. It's just it, mommy it, who runs yeah, the, it's the all bedroom. Bogus. No, 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 no. But people who don't know what's going on with it, they listen to, uh, to Airbnb and they go, oh, home sharing. I could have someone come to my home. I'll cook them blueberry pancakes. They're from San Francisco. I'll meet someone from the coast. How fun. Well, that's not the deal. The deal is that this is a cash business. Mm -hmm. This is drugs. This is prostitution. This is counterfeit goods. It's the same kind of What do you mean it's cash? Of, no, of people money. pay online. No, 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 no. No. Yes. Yes. You make your reservation online, and then you get in touch with the host. You know what pisses Airbnb off the most? They, they make the reservation oh. online. They go, oh, two nights. For two nights, I'm going to stay here, you know, at, at 435 West 47th Street. So they make the reservation, and then the host and the guest get together and talk, and the guest says, well, I really want to be there four nights. And the host says, fine, well, stay two nights on Airbnb and then just pay me for the other two nights. This is, this is Airbnb's big dirty secret that they oh, don't yeah. want anybody to know yeah, about. This yeah. is what really pisses them off. Yeah, of because course. once the guest and the host are in contact with each other, they do what do. they want. Exactly. Yeah. So they give Airbnb the two nights and they make yeah. the other two nights in cash. Exactly. No, this is the amount of money. That, why is Airbnb evaluated at $31 billion yeah, right at the moment? It's amazing. This is a cash business. Yeah. So the, the struggle now dealing with a group like Airbnb, mm -hmm. who has no problem breaking New York City's laws, mm -hmm. And they are protected essentially by a thing called the Communications Decency Act. Mm -hmm. This was a law that was passed in 1998, something like that. Uh, it's a federal law. And just as the, uh, the whole online you know, web business was getting going, the feds passed a law that essentially says if you provide a platform and people put things onto your platform, like Craigslist, yeah that you're not responsible, as the platform yeah. operator, you're not responsible for what they put on yeah. your platform. Yeah. It's called the Communication yeah. Decency yeah. Act. So when a couple of prostitutes were killed yeah, I know. in it, Boston. It, it's a big, it, it was a big issue. And page six, yes. uh, it was also a big issue. It, it's right, really, exactly. Uh, yeah. But the platform's not responsible. Yeah. So in New York City, Airbnb allows people to post units for rent, which are illegal. Mm -hmm. And all the city can do is to go after the host. If the host is caught, then the host can be fined. Yeah. But Airbnb is not fined. Yeah. Uh, Airbnb is just like, oh, well, we didn't. Know. We tell everyone yeah. to do it to do it legally. Yeah. And in their little disclaimer, it says, yeah, you know, yeah, follow yeah. all I'm the sure local of, laws. Uh, uh, you know, of that's what they say. Yeah, yeah. But Airbnb knows that fifty some plus percent of the postings on their website uh, are illegal. Are totally illegal. Because it's a full apartment. That's for rent, 365 days out of the year. So how do you how do you fight that story? I mean, how what what do you have any proposal who could be made to modify this this story or? Well, it's <coughs> it is on the ground action. Mm -hmm. It's it's citizens who call in complaints. The 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 process in New York City it's yeah. a, it's a complaint driven system. You have to call 311. Okay. You make a 4A complaint. Mm -hmm. You give them as much information as you can, the apartment number, when the people are there, when they come in and out, when the maid service uh, shows up. To clean the apartment. And then. and then those go to the mayor's office of special enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, which is charged with enforcing the illegal hotels uh, law. And in the last five years now, the mayor's office of special enforcement, their budget's gone from like a million dollars a year to like $20 million. Oh, a wow. Year. 
because the problem has become so yeah. uh, pervasive. And this administration is to their they're credit. They're working on it. They're, they're actually being responsive. Well, uh, they are actually doing that. And just two days ago in the newspaper, you might have seen a um, headline about a building, four or three buildings uh, owned by a couple of brothers, and they just paid a million dollar fine. Uh, because they did what you were talking about. They bought whole buildings, they cleaned out the residential tenants, and then they just rented them on But you have a guy who built in Brooklyn, on top of a loft, he built another yes. Uh, yes. room or two uh -huh. rooms. So Illegally. Whatever. Illegally. Uh -huh. on the, I mean, he built it. Yeah. Illegally. Yeah. On, on the roof. Yeah. And then rented on uh, Airbnb or whatever. Yeah. Well, the, again, the money, <laughs> the money is so incredible that people are willing to do this. They're willing to go that far. So for us, the fight is to inform tenants yeah. that these rentals are illegal mm -hmm. and to call in 311 compliance. Mm -hmm. And then the actual process, because it's a completely legal process, the inspection team has to go to a unit. Mm -hmm. They have to find the tourists in the unit when they go there. Oh. They have to pedigree the tourists. They have to get their itinerary, plane tickets, passports. They have to prove that they don't live there. Now what a lot of Airbnb hosts do, they'll tell their guests, if the police come to the door, tell them that you're my cousin Vinny's aunt. And the police come to the door and say, oh, I'm, I'm cousin Vinny's aunt. You know, we're just staying for the weekend. We're not renting. We're not doing anything wrong. And in some cases, I mean, these guys are very, the inspection teams are very good at this now. They're very, very good at this. And you've got a cop, you've got a building inspector, you have a fire inspector and health inspector. It is, in fact, a little intimidating when these guys show up at your door. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and, but again, the Airbnb hosts, wow. they say, don't open the door. Cop comes to the door, you don't have to open your door. And that's true. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, the fourth amendment. You, know, you, you, you don't have to, to allow the, the police yeah. into your place yeah. unless they have a Nobody right. opens the door in New York City on top of right. it, so it's very complicated. Well, the easiest people for them to deal with are the foreign tourists. Yeah. Because when a cop, a New York City cop, shows up in uniform and knocks on the door, yeah. the foreigners open the door. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. used to that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, they no, know. That's, that's where you know. That's where <laughs> yeah, you okay, know. Right, right, yeah. you know. Boom, yeah. <laughs> Boom. You see a cop at the door, you open it's it. Fantastic. You know. But uh, other, you know, you know, Americans, you know, are a little more savvy to the fact about illegal search and seizure, and they don't have to let a cop into your place. But they have to pedigree these guys. And then if they can prove that they don't actually live there and that they're renting this place just for three or four days, then they can write a violation. That violation then has to go to the Environmental Control Board, and there's a hearing. Uh, and you have a um, administrative law judge uh, hears the complaint. And if you're making, you know, $200 a night uh, and you're doing very well with it, then you hire an attorney. And the attorney goes down to ECB. Yeah, and I they, don't know how you can scale that and story they fight because it says it. it, it, it it's, it's, it's very it's, complicated. It's, it's very <laughs> difficult to prove. I mean, yeah. It is really it's hard. It's much to easier do. to do it than to prove the... It's really the hard to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I go to a lot of these hearings, because one thing that does help is if tenants actually go to the hearings. And you sit in front of the administrative law judge and you say, yes, judge, I see these people coming through all the time. I'm giving you testimony, you know, under oath that this is happening in my building. That really helps. but. You know, we're New Yorkers. You know, New Yorkers tend to Who's be very. Come, yeah. We tend you to be very tolerant people. And you don't mix up with business of yeah, other people. You know, if I mean, the guy who's living next to you is yeah. selling a little pot on yeah, the side, yeah. you don't really worry about yeah, it. You yeah. know, until someone pulls a gun, yeah. right? Yeah, we're, we're New Yorkers are mm. very live and let live. Mm -hmm. So people who make complaints mm -hmm. have really been pushed to the edge. Yeah. That they just there's a riot happening yeah. in their place. Yeah. And this is the this is the problem. I mean, yeah. this is the thing that I always yeah. come back to yeah. is. When you have tourists coming through a residential building, uh -huh. tourists are here for a good time. Yeah. They're here to enjoy themselves. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, they're here to, to go out and stay out late yeah. and see shows and go to clubs. And, and come you know, back. Come back and drink and yeah. smoke and mm -hmm. have a good time. And you have to get up in the morning and go to work. Yeah. So instead of having a neighbor who's next door who is like, hi, you know, how are you? You get up in the morning, you have a kid who goes to school, I have a kid who goes to school, you know, we go to bed at night, we get mm -hmm. up in the morning. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, every weekend, you have a riot mm -hmm. happening to you next door. Uh -huh. They leave the front door open, yeah. they, they palm the yeah, buzzers yeah, no, to get no, no, of course, out. Yeah. So your whole safety, New York City tenants also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your safety is based on the fact that you know your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, if I come home at night and there's people in the lobby of my building, I know who they are, mm -hmm and I'm not sure who they are, I leave the building. 
I call my precinct mm -hmm. and say, uh, you know, something's happening by building. I don't know what it is. That's how you're safe. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you hear the apartment next door, you know, all of a sudden people are screaming in the middle of the night, you call the cops. Mm -hmm. So, no, so it, yeah. Airbnb uh, now it, 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 wants their IPO. You know, they want to go public because that's how they're going to make the big money. Yeah. Right? To go, they're going to get the money back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't go public unless they're legal in New York City. New York City is their second biggest market. Uh, Paris is their oh, yeah. biggest market. Yeah, Paris is their biggest. New York City is their second biggest market. Oh, wow. So they can't go IPO and at the same time tell all their investors, yeah, you know, we're going public, but, you know, but technically we're change illegal. And exactly, and you're yeah. illegal on 70% yeah. of our, uh, right. our, our space. So Airbnb has hired every lobbyist known to man or God, and they're in Albany right now. Um, trying to get people to submit laws that essentially say Protect. every apartment in New York City can it, be a yeah. hotel room. That's what Airbnb wants. And it's not just Airbnb. Sure. You know, it's uh, home stay and yeah, flip flop yeah. and yeah, you know yeah. drop key and all yeah. these guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. But what they want is to change the law so that every class A apartment yeah. in New York City is a hotel room. Right. Well, the multiple dwelling law says that that can't happen. Mm -hmm. That's a state law. Uh, zoning, New York City zoning, says that can't happen because mm -hmm. in a residential zone, yeah. you can't run a commercial business. Yeah. Uh, the fire department says that that can't happen because the fire department says if you have a hotel, then you have to have yeah. this way yeah, top yeah, 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 heavy yeah. You know, no, fire no, it's prevention. It's a very complicated story. Well, uh, the Stouffer Hotel fire uh, that happened in... I was in 97, 94, 97, something like that, up in Westchester. 28 some odd people were killed up there. After that fire happened, and the MGM fire mm -hmm. in Vegas, mm -hmm. after those two fires happened, the code fire compliance for hotels changed mm -hmm. and just went uh, sprinklers, yeah, yeah. maps, yeah, yeah. fire wardens. Since, and since blah, blah. then, there's not been a single fire-related hotel death in New York City since they did that. Mm -hmm. Well, an Airbnb, you just walk into somebody's house. Mm -hmm. You know, as a guest, you don't know where the, the mm -hmm. fire escape is. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to get out of the building if mm -hmm. anything happens. As a resident, you assume that you do. As a resident, you know where your fire escape is. Mm -hmm. As a resident, you know how to get down the stairs. But So there's the fire code. And then even more important than perhaps all of those is there's not a residential lease in New York City that doesn't say, if you want a roommate, you have to get the landlord's permission to get a roommate. Yeah. Condos and co-ops, uh, they have proprietary leases, which totally restrict how many people can live in a condo or a co-op. It says Absolutely. you can't have. Yeah, but they are not considered a roommate because they don't stay. They just stay for a few That's days, right. so it's not, it's not. It's not a roommate story. Yeah. So in a, in a condo or a co-op, you have to go to your board and get permission. Mm, to get so, people three days. So yes. So Airbnb. So Airbnb coming into a condo or co-op or any residential building is a violation of no, the lease. No. Yeah. Airbnb. But you yeah. to have someone in your apartment for three days. Yeah. I can do that. You can do it. So that's where the story. Well, that's where the, the complication. Well, is. the law, the the multiple dwelling law, says that I can have rumors or borders in my place mm -hmm. as long as I am in the apartment, mm -hmm. physically exactly. in the apartment. I think that's where I can have two rumors can. or borders. Mm -hmm. But if I leave the apartment, mm -hmm. I'm not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Then it's illegal. Yeah. That's what makes it illegal. Yeah. But every lease in New York City says this. Mm -hmm. So there's not a landlord in New York City that suddenly wants to have their building run by Airbnb. And people who have rent stabilized, I am a rent stabilized tenant. Lucky. Thank God. I wouldn't live in New York City no, if I, I know. didn't have a rent stabilized. <laughs> I have this problem and telling you it. it's, I very, know. it's very complicated. Well, a rent stabilized as a rent stabilized tenant, mm -hmm. I can in fact sublet. I'm a, I have to get the landlord's permission, mm -hmm. but I can sublet. Mm -hmm. But I can't make more than ten percent on top of the legal rent that I pay. So my rent's 1200 bucks a month. So that means that I can't make more than $120 oh a yeah. month on your to, to, to sublet, sublet. Oh yeah. to sublet. So I could sublet for uh, $1,320, all right? Well, w what's the point of making, you know, $1,320? I could get $200 a night. Mm -hmm. I could get $6,000 a month and only pay $1,200 a month, which is my rent-stabilized yeah. lease, right? Yeah. 
Well, that's illegal. Yeah. That's called profiteering. Right. And if a rent-stabilized tenant does that and they get caught, they get evicted. And the courts have shown that they have no mercy for this. The couple of rent-stabilized people that I know who have done this and gotten caught, they're out. Yeah. They've lost their place. And then the apartment lost the uh, rent-stabilized place too? Um, it's technically they shouldn't, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's you know, a big problem. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's another a big, big problem. Yeah. So it, right at the moment, yeah. you know, we have less than a million rent stabilized apartments left in New York City, well, and we think that there's somewhere between 25 and 30,000 apartments that are permanently lost to the rent rolls that are being used by Airbnb and its ilk. 25 to 30,000 apartments wow. are off the market right now. And the, the availability rate in Manhattan is 1.79%. So no, I know. there's actually more apartments have been removed through Airbnb than are available for someone to go and rent right now. Yeah. So that's the problem. We live on an island, you know, yeah. where you, you can't build anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. where, where are you going? Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you're going up. That's, yeah. that's why they want to just, I just heard that on 66th Street, they want to build a 72-story building yeah. up there. I'm sure. Because it's the only direction that you yeah. can go. Yeah. So it is, it is a huge, huge, huge problem now in the city, and people's lives are being negatively impacted by it who live here, and it's forcing rents up. Yeah. Um, that if you reduce the amount of available apartments, then the amount of available apartments go up. Uh, so it is an endless problem. Like I say, you know, back in 2010, we thought that we had won. I know, <laughs> and it's keep going, 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 it's crazy. And now it's 2017, and we're still scratching our heads yeah. going, how can we? win? What do we get to win? Oh, and then this guy Manafort, right? Um, the, uh, the, the, the Trump's campaign manager guy who just got uh, indicted. Yeah. Well, one of the, the indictments was that he was money laundering by buying apartments in New York City that he was putting on Airbnb. That was one of his, that was one of his schemes. Of his trick. Yeah, that was of one course. of his schemes. Yeah. And a thing just came out recently about um, uh, Russian money laundering going into Airbnb apartments. So we've had prostitution. No, apartment, it's, it's, it's we've had prostitution in Airbnb. We've had drugs. It's just we have money laundering. I mean, it's the whole. Where welcome, are the, welcome, as kitchen. <laughs> where are the blueberry pancakes? You know, that's my question. You know, where's the nice mom and pop saying, hey, come in, my boy, and stay a couple of days? <laughs> in Manhattan. So Airbnb, Tom, Airbnb me is not what it claims to be. We have to uh, close the show. Thank you so much thank for you. having no, me. Really thank you. Thank you. It was a very pleasure. Anytime you have a story like this, you come back and then we... Uh, I'll come back sometime and tell some Pauly stories. Okay, great. The Pauly stories are really good. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that was uh, Face to Face uh, with Tom and then thank you very much for watching and please keep uh, watching your, uh, your news on Presenza.com and uh, hope to see you very soon.